Hi there. Today we're here to talk about uh, the International Women's Day for our Oakwood podcast. My name's Abby Keach. I'm the Managing Director at Oakwood Solicitors and I'm joined today by uh, Beverly Barker, who's a paralegal uh, in our Employers Liability Department. Hi, Abby. Um, we really wanted to celebrate International Women's Day by discussing the different paths that both of us have taken to get to where we are now. Bev, could you just go through how you've come to be where you are and, and the position that you're in at the moment? Well, obviously, there are lots of different ways to get to the positions that you and I are in. Um, I went the paralegal route and um, I literally started right at the bottom as an office junior and gradually worked my way up. And until ultimately, Abby, I came and worked alongside you um, in the early 2000s, <laughs> a long time ago. And um, that's the way that I progressed through the ranks, really. And I did uh, road traffic accident work and I did employer liability work. But it was a gradual process of learning on the job um, until, as I say, ultimately I came and worked um, at Michael Lewin Solicitors, the forebearer to Oakwood. Um, and uh, then my life took a different path and I decided I want to have children and as you know I left the firm and had a career break for sort of 10 years and I've the last few years come back and worked with you here at Oakwood so the, my career path has gone down lots of different routes ultimately to be where I am today. And which do you think is the hardest being a mother or working? Being a mother. <laughs> Absolutely totally agree. But obviously your um, your route was a little bit different so describe how, how you've got to where you are obviously ultimately managing director of of Oakwood itself? Um, I started off doing a, a medical microbiology degree at Newcastle University, um, did a few years in research, um, found that you were paid 10p to work very long <laughs> hours um, and decided to do some temporary work where I also started in admin and worked my way up through the ranks. Um, I was lucky enough to be paid to do a, a law conversion degree and then to do the LPC. Uh, which took four years part time, um, worked at the road traffic department, uh, became head of the department, had managed to fit in three children in between, <laughs> um, and then multitasking <laughs> at it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and then um, eventually, um, Mr. Lewin decided that he wanted to retire. I think I was three weeks into my um, maternity of my third <laughs> child um, and ultimately came back uh, to take over from him and then have been the managing director for the last five years. Um, and, you know, building on that, um, that sort of career path, uh, probably till I'm about 65 and retire. So not a few more <laughs> years to go. Yes. Lots of years still to go. Absolutely. <laughs> Both of us. But I think it's it's very interesting to see how the workplace has changed since we both started in oh, the early in the early two thousands. So, yeah. um, when I first was made a director, I was the only female out of five, um, and now we have five fat directors and only one is a bloke is a is a gentleman. So it has changed dramatically in our particular workplace. I think it's a wider thing, though. I think there are lots of firms that still could still promote more women and. You know, there's still a big gap, I think, in how many women are in senior roles, although solicitors have overtaken in terms of percentage, Absolutely, how many yeah. female solicitors there are. I think, um, you know, overall partners are still below what they should be. I think there's still a, lot, a massive room for improvement. And in, in terms of the pay gap and things as well, obviously, I'm a classic example of somebody who went off and had a career break. And I was lucky that, you know, I was able to come back in mainly because I've got an established relationship with you. And you helped me to come back into it. But I think I would have struggled, I'll be honest, to jump back into a role like I have done if I hadn't had that contact. And I'm sure there are lots and lots of people out there who are in that position who have so many gifts and, you know, abilities that they could use. But people aren't taking advantage of them, um, largely maybe because of flexible working as well. I mean, you, Abby, have um, do give that opportunity to people um, to give you know the flexible working opportunity which I think a lot of women need I think a lot of mums would want to come back and do something like this but they can't because there's not the opportunity or they're not willing to give a little bit in terms of flexibility and working hours and, and what they need. And I think but that's, that's the difficulty with schools, isn't it? A lot of the schools don't have the early birds or the, the late nights that allow mothers to be able to do it. And, and the emphasis is on their pick up and you put oh, the emphasis yeah. and then back on to grandparents to be able to, to raise the children, which is very difficult. And 
it is a it is a big change in the workplace and, and we have a lot of women that work in our office but as we've had youngsters that have come through the ranks having graduated in from law they're now having children and they're, and they're they're able to have that opportunity to have the time off with their children but we do as you say give the flexible hours to be able to move it on how did you find though returning to work after 10 years out with with children where well I, I mean as you know I did do a lot of jobs in that 10 years I'm just not this kind of work I think the the opportunities in terms of um hours and things like that are very limited for people I think you know I I did things like baby classes as you know and I did you know I worked in um catering school catering which is nothing like what I would have done but there was just not the opportunity to get back in so I found it really hard and as I say I had had the contact with you and and I looked for a few things around that time um but there weren't that many opportunities so it was hard and also as you know the confidence to come back and do it that that when you've had a big gap out of this sort of work and you're not necessarily kept up with all the case law or all the changes there's been a lot of change in the law in the last well you know 15 years whatever if you've not kept up with that it's difficult to think that you can jump back in there's a lot to catch up so it was building the confidence as well um as you but know it's also to, salaries to you've missed out of sort of promoting oh, i suppose yeah. through the yeah. ranks and you you probably look back now as to where you were when you first took your career break, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the salaries now that you, you come back on, that's often an issue for a lot of women that they're sort of and pushed down on salaries, yeah, costs. and time off for half terms and mm. summer holidays. And it is very, very difficult, but it's also about managing that work-life balance of, of being able to, you know, have time off with the children, um, but also realise for me personally that I've got to be here to pay the wages and pay the VAT bill and, massive family, and all the rest of it. And it, it, is, it is very difficult. Um, I'm sure I wasn't as grey when I first started this job. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what challenges do you think that working mothers face, though? And Well, it, it's even in just day-to-day life. I mean, for example, last night, my eldest was up for four hours of the evening. So I had four hours sleep last night and you still have to get up and do the same job as everyone else. Or, you know, you want to excel and do even better. But you have those sort of challenges and you, you have that you do have to get the balance right. Um, and it is it is difficult, as you know, that there are lots of things that happen that have to, that happen alongside your work life. And, and you have to take on those challenges and still perform well. Um, whereas somebody who doesn't have those those challenges, not that I regret any of it or wouldn't want it, but they, they don't have to consider those things, perhaps. I totally agree. I totally agree. I mean, how do you find, I mean, you worked way back with uh, at a firm that was, you know, a predominantly male working for firm with with the male culture of let's mm. all go drinking on a Friday and, yeah. you know, slight bullying Boys elements, were... etc. How do you find... I mean, you've you've come from that background to one where there's predominantly women, and and again, it's a different challenge working alongside a number of women. But it's it's a different different yes. challenge. Um, <laughs> maybe a few more different hormones. But um, how do you find that discrimination? Do you think discrimination is still evident in the workplace I, today? Yeah, I I think so. I mean, you had that high profile Samira Ahmed case recently, didn't you, against the BBC, and that she won that case. And um, there's still lots of things that need to change and. You know, obviously we have cases ourselves um, that go through our employment department that for all sorts of things um, like uh, discrimination on different levels. Um, I mean, I think there was, a, there was a case last year where somebody um, took their employers to court because they told her that she should, it was not in her job description, but she should be cleaning the toilets because it, it needed a woman's touch. Um, I mean, it's that sort of thing that you wouldn't expect still to be happening, but it does. I mean, the boys club element, um, yes, I have experienced as you as you said, and it is really really hard because you feel like you have to do one hundred and fifty percent to their hundred percent to actually get noticed. That was the thing that I found that you know I I had to be better than everybody else because I had to get over that the fact that I was a woman and I didn't go to the pub on a Friday lunchtime and talk about the football or well, not that I don't like football but you know talk about the things that they thought were relevant or they wouldn't even invite you and it's it is hard to overcome that because you know a lot of it in the workplace is can be who you know what you know particularly when it is something like a boys club it's like you somebody may get promoted over you because they are the person that goes to pub with the boss 
every Friday. Yeah. No, I mean, so. I used to be the the only female, as I said, of the, of the five directors, and I used to be How the one that, that? <laughs> that used to be the secretary. I used to do the writing up of the notes, and it was always sort of pushed to me to do the sort of female side of things <laughs> traditionally. And, and, you know, you sort of, you're right, you feel like you feel like you have to do it to try and be seen and play the game and all the rest, but... How how did that work for you though? I mean, did, did you feel that you had to go that extra hundred, you know, hundred and fifty percent over there, hundred percent? Or yeah, because I ended up having shorter maternities because of it. Um, because you you've always got that element of somebody higher up or will stab you in the back to get where they need to be, and and it's yeah. it's the ambition, I suppose, from from different people that you're always having to compete with them to make sure that you are noticed, that you're doing a better job, that you're doing the longer hours, that you're less holidays, whatever it may be, to try and get to the position where you need to be. Mm. And then you can relax. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you relax? I mean, you know, from the work side of things. Smooth. It was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> how do you relax of, a, of an evening or during the week? Of the bottle of wine on it. <laughs> um, well, there's, there's lots of things that you can do. I mean, I think one of the main things for me is to have the quality time with the kids. As you know, I mean, it is hard sort of balancing the holidays between yourself and your partner. Anyone who's in um, in that position will know that you only have so many holidays, so you only get so many family holidays all together. But one of the things that I like to do is if we can't have a holiday, all four of us, myself and partner and my two kids, I'll take them away and we'll do things together and have downtime by the seaside. Or, I mean, as you know, I've got family all over the country. I'll go and visit them and just get completely away from the jobs at home and work and everything that puts pressure on your time because when you're at home you do stuff you you know you do all the little bits and pieces you're not actually relaxing I'm sure you're oh I know you're sat on the computer at 10 o'clock at night having probably done all the housework and everything else back to doing doing work again so you know it's important that you have have time with the kids quality time with the kids but also time for yourself I mean I joined the gym again recently believe it or not um and you know <laughs> you know that that sort of time away from everything where you just have to think about yourself, just being able to stand in the shower, in the changing rooms, on your own, without somebody shouting through the door, you know, where's this, where's that, where's my Lego, I want a sandwich, is actually really quite therapeutic. So it's just finding those little ways, and, and also I've dabbled with mindfulness and things like that, just ways of finding peace and space, I think it's important, or getting up half an hour really to have a cup of coffee <laughs> in peace. That's quite a good tactic. <laughs> and just to really sum up, I mean, how do you feel that it's changed for women in the legal profession um, over the last few years? Um, well, if you look, you know, over the last hundred years, we have the uh, Sex Disqualification Removal Act, which enabled people to actually, for females to become solicitors and barristers and everything else. If you look at how things have moved on and you had Lady Hale with that landmark decision last year and all that sort of stuff with the spider brooch, that lady. Um, you've got quite a, you know you have women in very prominent positions but they're still few and far between she was still the first person to take that appointment or you know whatever and there is it's still a work in progress I think I think there's it's wonderful that there are more women sisters than men because that's a big landmark but there's still more to go in terms of pay and flexibility and you know it's, it is usually the woman who is the care primary caregiver so in order to get people back into the workplace like the difficulties I had I think you do need to have more flexible working um, and and ways of sort of, you know, finding your way back in to enable you to build your confidence back to know you can still do it. Because I think you get into that hate, that um, frame of mind where you, you think you can't do it anymore. You've forgotten in amongst all the nappies and bottles and, um, you know, school parent teacher meetings. You forget that there's actually something else that you can do that is for you. I mean, that's what I feel like when I come into work and I sit down it's actually probably more relaxing than being at home sometimes because you've got you, you can focus on one task I don't know whether you find that yeah I do because I think when you go to nursery you're, you're known as Xander's mum yeah, yeah you know you come just to work to have it I mean I went to an all-girls school and I look at the women around me that have progressed through the ranks and I see them in the independent and the guardian and and on the high street you know there's a girl from my school who's just opened a, a, a boutique um skincare range and, and, and I'm very wow. proud of the way that the women that I went to school with have 
succeeded so brilliantly in career paths that they've chosen and have gone on to do some great things. And I'm a big advocate of it. And I, you know, I think all women should be pushed into to doing it and having the opportunity to be able to come back from career breaks yeah. with children and be able to sort of know that they've got another 20, 30 years of working. Yeah, you, you, your life's not over, you know, <laughs> once you've had those kids and you're, she's wonderful and, you know, it's, it's, but it's the all best part thing of that the I've bigger ever done. Picture. But yeah, it's, you also, it doesn't end there. It's not like that's it now. You're not going to do anything for yourself in terms of career ever again. I think that's wrong and I don't think people should feel like that, but I do think there are lots of people like that. I mean, there's a, a lady at my school who has a child who has special needs and she's a teacher and she felt she felt she had to completely come out of the career to support him, which is amazing that that she's done that. But at the same time, she doesn't feel like she's challenging herself um, enough with the, with the work she's doing because it just has to work around him. So, yeah, it's just finding ways for that to happen. Well, thank you very much. Um, we are big advocates of International Women's Day and um, we're very proud to be supporting it. Um, if you do want to visit our site, Oakwood Solicitors, then please do and we can possibly help you in any sort of aspects of law. Thank you. Thank you. Oakwood Solicitors is a multi-service law firm. Our award-winning team is here to help you whatever your query may be. Call us now for a free consultation on 0113 200 9787 or visit us at www.urquidsolicitors.co.uk. Urquid Solicitors, traditional law, modern ways.